Rangers players playing. There's Willie Johnson at number 11 and at number 6, Sandy Jarden. Great number of honours, 18 years with Rangers, 39 caps, captain Scotland six times. And there's the Air United team. They have been struggling recently, knocked out of the cup by Albin Rovers. Another ex-Rangers player there, Eric Morris, number 11. And the referee today is uh, David Galloway. He actually refereed a game in Uganda in front of President Amin, who was given a medal for it. Vital game for Hart, desperately anxious to get back into the higher echelons. And as an institution in Scottish football, they certainly deserve to be there. Carefully picked up. Willie Pettigrew, top scorer for Hearts this season. Willie Pettigrew, who has seen service with uh, both Motherwell and the United. This is Jarden. Decided to break forward. Johnson. Brilliant touch. You really can still turn it on, you know. That's a very neat ball. Can it be touched to the side and Bowman can't get there? Morris flipped it away for United. A mass of white shirts. That's a good-looking ball, and it must be yes. No, it's been given offside, and that is most unfortunate. I think, in fact, if Byrne had taken that himself and put it in the net, it would have counted. But uh, O'Connor was in an offside position as that ball was slipped to the side. picked up sweeps it in very nicely Willie Johnson's there how can he take on his goal back again he goes to the line that's a very good ball was kind of fortunate coming off of Connors the and already Willie Johnson has ripped this United uh, defense apart Willie Johnson one of the most controversial figures in British football but beneath it all, he can play football. Fleeting. Was a nice deep little touch forward. And Morris tried to be much too precise about it. He took it very well, and I think Hearts must be asking themselves the question, how on earth did he get that opportunity in the first place? O'Connor. Mackay goes round the back. Did try the shot. Gary Mackay, who was in the youth squad which won the European Championship and will be off on his journeys to Mexico this summer to try and win the World Championship for Scotland. And the goalkeeper with the same name has been under a bit of pressure. Johnson's corner kick, there's Ronnie McDonald and he got it again, must be this time, yes. Swerved forward by O'Connor, the first goal of the, the game, totally merited. On the basis of Hart's pressure, United have really done very little in this game so far and Derek O'Connor sweeping it in very sweetly, the danger again coming from that corner kick. The back header by Roddy McDonald going right up there. He's done it two or three times in the game so far. And uh, there was O'Connor to rifle his 17th goal of the season. Pettigrew. Kai. made a bit too much of it nice touch by Willie Pettigrew again a corner well the smell of the goals is in his nostrils now all right Johnston quick as you like what a brilliant shot at 
Messi. Superbly struck there. Shields really hammered at. I think it looked as if it was going to be easy for the goalkeeper but at first, and then it began to swerve away, and that was a, an outstanding save. Well, Connor put the O'Connor put the both off. Willie Johnston. Way to the side again, that acceleration still with him. Now with the right foot too near the goalkeeper this time, who didn't like it. A bit apprehensive about it all. Dunn needs a touch and gets it. Now Johnston. Good control again. With the little body swells he has. That was a much better tackle. Didn't get it away this time. McAllister picks it up. Strong looking player. Buchanan. Now Robert Connor. Picked up there by Hedrington. United's most concerted move so far. And I think uh, Kit wisely conceding the corner. corner kick Donald goes after it well there's a deflection it's in I think there was a deflection there well all the danger coming from that corner kick with Roddy McDonald certainly making a challenge the Hutch defense in general looking up a little bit lackadaisical the, the shot by McNaughton but I think there was a distinct deflection and I think that more than anything else beat Henry Smith It's a corner kick. Johnston. That's an ear pull brilliantly saved. Again, that boy of Johnston to Roddy McDonald almost paying off again. Accurate corner, brilliant header, and matched once again by Scott Mackay. Johnson goes all the way across to the other side of the field. Harder one. Mackay unhappy with that. Well, there was a bit of a pull, but Morris breaks. United in the break. McNaughton. Well, there's a good shot. Hearts more than a shade, unfortunate to be on level terms. He should be well up. The but too deliberate that Willie Pettigrew. There's Bowman with a shot. It was in fact a very awkward ball for the youngster because it came slightly too high for him. And he had to try and get back, get some room, and he lashed out at it. So in from just behind the attack, this young man, Dave Bowman, is proving a very useful player indeed. Just slightly off it. Ben goes in as well. He pinned it and just off. Fox turning on the screw again. And uh, I think Willie Pettigrew is showing his experience because he was lying deeper than he has been in the game, but he was getting forward again for the return pass very quickly. 
an awkward height again for him, but I thought he did rather well to get a touch and try and push it away inside the left-hand post, just missing out on it. Well, I think uh, there was a bit of pushing there was Ian McAllister. Well, the referee hasn't really had all that much to contend with in the game so far. He's in a good open game. Justin, oh, look at that. Well, Johnston, of course, can still produce these electrifying bursts. I mean, there's no doubt, no doubt he reacts in certain situations in a way that is not desirable, but uh, when he turns on his play, it entertains, and that's why the punters are on the terrace. Shields coming forward to Johnson. That's a good ball by Johnson. Bowman, laboring at it slightly, he's been caught a lot in possession. Well, they crowd up again, United. They have only one man up. Everybody behind the ball, bar Bruce Clellan. Oh, very neatly on indeed. Kid on the far side, this is going to be a good one. O'Connor tries to get there, yes! Pettigrew. Two on. Well, I wonder how many of our viewers have seen Willie Pettigrew snapping goals like that. Through the years, for one of the D United and now Hearts, not the easiest of balls to take coming down towards him he had to make sure it was cleanly hit and there was absolutely no hope of Scott Mackay getting that Pettigrew turned away from it and we've had the occasional break by A United one or two of them causing some uh, panic to the Hearts defence but uh, by and large it's been a case of Hearts with almost total grip of midfield flooding the Air United penalty area and they could even have been boy, a good deal more than 2-1 up. Well, there goes the halftime whistle. As I said, Hearts very strongly in the lead even though it's only 2-1 they've had uh, the most of the game and Willie Johnson, some of the best things in the match have come from that man, number 11. Controversial. Though he is, he can still entertain the people on the terracing. That uh, first goal coming by O'Connor. O'Connor getting up there very quickly. As I said, Hearts were flooding the penalty area, getting the men in. And O'Connor scoring his 17th goal of the season. Yeah, United coming back in the 25th minute. There was a distinct deflection. McNaughton getting the shot in. And I think uh, Henry Smith might have got it in the first place. But that neatly snapshot by Pettigrew settled the matter in the first half and Hearts are looking good at this stage. Off we go to the second half. The pitch is uh, very soggy, by the way, in places, particularly in the middle. Uh, Sandy Jard was telling me he was out on it at 10 o'clock this morning and it was uh, bone hard, but the uh, frost has come right out of it. There's a very fast thaw in Edinburgh at the moment. A good ball burn didn't quite have the pace Connor Bowman a bit slack with it Excellent ball. Here's Pettigrew. The corner's inside. That might have been a great goal. Best move in the game so far. Willie Pettigrew still has it. Might just get it and we get a corner kick. Oh, that was a superb attacking breakaway by Hearts there. Good combination. Neat play to the side. Lovely ball forward for Pettigrew, who was looking inside for a corner and the interception 
brought about the end of what might have been a glorious finale. Well, Pettigrew pecking a wee bit as he gets behind that, and Ronnie McDonald once again got the back tuck to the head. So we have Buchanan coming off and uh, McAnally coming on for Air United. Willie Johnson's decided to take this with his left foot. He can do it with either. Equal effect. That's off the line. Well, Willie Pettigrew once again getting up. We've got a clear header. We were right behind that. And that's what defenders have paid for. McAllister it was. Getting the head behind it and off the line. Johnston. Another tasty cross. It's just over from the corner. <laughs> I think maybe passing a comment or two in his own play. He was falling back, you see, and I think uh, when he's doing that, the possibilities of elevation become greater. The way it went, soaring up into the skies. Did play that well. Very good, beautiful touch on Boom. Can't get there. There's Mackay. Will he get his shot? And he does. that is never an easy ball to take but he did get the gap and he did finish it in textbook style and that must put a glow into every heart supporter here today with 17 minutes of the second half gone 3-1 Across there by McNaughton and Johnson comes away with it. So the play by Johnson again. And that's a superb ball. Pettigrew. The corner is inside. Up comes Bowman. Can he get it to the line and get it back? There's not enough strength in his pass back. But a, a beautiful move by Hart who sporadically during this game have turned on the most delightful, entertaining football. <laughs> Called it by Connor. I think the... Both sets of players realize it's well nigh over. Pettigrew racing after it. Willie Johnson on the wing and given inside to Mackay. That's a good ball by Mackay. Pullman. Yes. Oh, he took that so well. 4 1. Absolutely delighted with himself. So are the supporters. Again, a ball on the left hand side. It wasn't too easy through to him he found himself in a very good position maybe a little bit surprised he got there at all but look at the efficient professional way he swept it in and hearts overall in this game have certainly impressed me a bit of hesitation but that is a good ball henry smith has committed himself to that and does well we have one minute remaining
Brodden. Good ball by Jordan Penn. Good run forward again by both Hearts fullbacks have done very well today coming forward. That time it was Shields to Johnson trying to get it to his right foot, which he does. Wanted the reverse pass. Bowman. Bit too much walking the ball that time. Pressure still on. Jordan. Oh, a lovely little dummy. This is a good move. Oh, brilliant move. Can he be put it away? Yes. today good understanding and I know one or two people have said the season of hearts have been stodgy at times but not today when they've gone forward in numbers there's been a lot of uh, subtlety in the play as well as par it was demonstrated there beautifully done indeed and finished off by the man who comes from Dublin every weekend to play Burn. and that in fact is the final whistle We've seen six goals. We've had a look at Hearts in very impressive form. There were dull patches in the game, but not all that many. Outstanding individual performances, and I think quite apart from the players that we do know about from the past, like Sandy Jardin and Willie Johnson, the young players were very good, Mackay and Bowman in particular. Really a splendid game by any standards, and the only losers were the people who didn't turn up. There was admittedly a poor crowd there yesterday, I think a combination of the poor midweek result that Hart suffered and the unsympathetic weather. Next weekend will be a real test of Hart's ability to pull their undoubtedly large support out. They're creating a little bit of club history by playing their cup game against East Fife on a Sunday. Now it's the first time they've ever done this in a competitive match and the break with tradition I suspect will have them rolling along the Gorgi Road in their thousands and underlining yet again how badly we need this club in the Premier Division. Now, frankly, I'm not really fussy how it's achieved by the end of the season, but one way or the other, Hearts and Hibs must next year be in the Premier Division. It would boost the game in the capital and have a spin-off effect on the rest of the country. It really is a must. Well, yesterday I spoke to both Alec McDonald and Wallace Mercer after the game and about the performance in the field. I asked Alec, firstly, what influence the more experienced player had on the youngsters. Did they, in fact, have that influence? Well, I like to think so, Archie. Um, we spent quite a wee bit of time with them. And um, I think, personally, the best way of coaching these young lads just now is on the park because they get the instant reaction from the experienced players. And there's no way, like, Sandy Jardin or myself or Willie Johnson is going to bully kids for nothing. We're going to help them, and that's the type of people that Sandy Jardin and Willie Johnson are. Now, the, the goals were particularly well taken, one or two of them. The build-ups were very good. I, I suppose as a, a manager looking out there, although you, I'm sure you wish you were playing yourself, you're delighted that that can happen, that your build-up is good and you can finish. Yeah, very much so, actually. I've watched um, quite a few games at the start of the weekend. It was really long ball stuff. And we get caught um, a couple of weeks ago that we were playing the ball on long. But we, we had a talk one of the days and um, we sat down and we started to play the football again. And I'm delighted that we're, we're continuing it. Now, we have with us today Wallace Mercer, uh, who's uh, come across to speak to us. And I've asked you to come here because I would like to put it fairly bluntly to you. Supposing Hearts didn't get promotion, although obviously it looks as if they would, would it be a disaster for the club? It wouldn't be a disaster for the club, but in the end it would be very debatable whether we could stay to be full-time. I think it's very important, getting back to what Alec was saying about the development of the Bowmans and the Mackays and the John Robertsons, that being full-time you get the chance to develop them. Very good, beautiful touch on Burn can't get there. Here's Mackay, will he get his shot and he does, yes! Good ball by Mackay. Bowman. Yes. Oh, he took that so well. Are you aware, Wallace, that many people in Scottish football would love to see Hearts get into the Premier Division and be the force they used to be in the left? Well, that's right. But I mean, Alec and I both appreciate the only people who are going to help Hearts are Hearts themselves. But you must remain full time. I think it's essential. If we get into the Premier Division, we've got to stay full time. And I think it's also critical that a lot of other clubs stay full time as well. Mm. I don't think the politicians fully appreciate the pressures that Scottish football is under just now and the contribution I think that we make to the society within which we're working. And in a sense, do you, do you think because the, the background to the society at the moment, uh, very difficult economic times, 
that uh, maybe the structure of Scottish football ought to be looked at so that we can encourage full-time football. That is correct, in fact, and I was at Dunblane recently with the other chairman in Scottish football, and there seems to be a wind of change about, there seems to be an attitude of mind by the Premier Division clubs anyway, that whatever happens, they want to get their affairs in order. We must get rid of this financial indebtedness of the top five or six clubs apart from Dundee United and Aberdeen, and some sort of new system has got to be organised. We can't keep on having the tail wagging the dog, because in the end we do supply certain clubs in Scotland by far the, the rump of the football public.